I really fucking dropped my mouse. <laughs> I dropped my mouse and just closed out the music, so no music, I guess. <laughs> oh my god. And then, like, I tried to start. I was like, okay, I'll just go on. And then my mic just wasn't showing up, and I had to, like, unplug it and replug it in. Am I even live? Yeah, okay. <laughs> what a clusterfuck immediately. <laughs> I'm not, like, not ready, but I just wasn't expected. I wasn't expecting to be live yet. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Bowser's Fury again. <laughs> I, uh, I'll tell you why this is fucked, is, um, I actually, I actually set things up a bit different this time. I'm sitting in a chair, for one, which I don't normally do. I just sit on my bed and just let my back be destroyed. Uh, but this time I brought my chair over, and I don't know why I never fucking thought of that before. Um just using this little table as a desk in front of me what a concept instead of off to my side where I don't have you know chat and everything in view immediately better a clusterfuck now and not mid gameplay yeah I know right it, I'll take it at the beginning where I could like at least cut it out which I'll leave all that in but if it was really bad, I could just cut it out. Anyway, welcome back to the stream and Bowser from his fury. Um, so we beat the game last time. Uh, beat the main story. We got 50 uh, cat shines, and now we're going to get the other 50. Toadette is here. So it's already been like a week since this came out and since I streamed it. Uh, and I did spend some time alone with it and kind of, uh, you know, got a better grip on the game itself. Because I will admit, it is a little hard. It was hard for me to fully concentrate on something totally new. And there were, like, a few things that I just wasn't getting, like, you know, mechanic-wise, when I was first playing this on stream. And I liked playing it on stream. For the very first time. But I also like having alone time with it. Um, and I understood it a lot better. Uh, and it's really addictive, much like Odyssey. So I did end up playing the whole entire thing. This is no longer new material for me. But I'll say this, it's very good. I I liked it when I was streaming it, and then I liked it even more when I was just playing on my own. Uh-oh. 
I also found out, like, one of the things, like, I didn't like that much was, um, having to wait for Bowser to show up and break any of these blocks that you see. Um, I didn't realize that you can just summon Bowser whenever you feel like with the... Yes, exactly, with the Bowser Amiibo. Um, which still doesn't really help if you don't have the Amiibo, but I do, so... Uh, I'll use that on occasions to speed things up. Because basically you just stand at the blocks, use the Amiibo, and he'll destroy him. Um, and I'd realized, like, every one of these islands, basically, every one of these islands has, like, a Collect 5 Cat Shards shrine, uh, shine, and, uh, you know, blow up the Fury Blocks shine. So you're basically gonna need him on every island. Glad they remember Amiibos exist. They, yeah, uh, they barely do anymore. Um, which is which is a shame because I like Amiibo, but I don't have any use for them now. Um, I haven't used them in a long time. I I used them quite a bit on like the Wii U and 3DS. Um, and like I trained my Amiibos for like Smash Wii U a lot. Uh, I didn't do it that much with, you know, Ultimate. Uh, and not that many other games really use, you know, Switch games, use Amiibo to, like, a great extent. It's it's always just kind of like an afterthought thing, which is kind of what it is here. It feels like, like, you totally don't need them. They're cool little collectibles now, but they're almost 20 bucks, so it's like, nah. Yeah. Uh, like, they had the Cat Mario and Cat Peach amiibos specifically for this. And I have no desire to have that. Uh-oh. I should have been Cat. I like this, uh, Plessy coin that looks like the Dragon Coins from, uh, Mario World. I enjoy when they do, like, little acknowledgements of things, like, minor things that you haven't seen in a while. Oh, that's not good. The reflex to want to throw Cappy is still strong. That's when I immediately uh, started playing this the other day. I kept thinking, yeah, why was to throw Cappy and why is run, which I am now you know used to because I've been playing this for the past week and uh, 3D World as well, and it can it controls almost exactly like 3D World. Um, one of the things though that I hadn't considered that I didn't really realize was a problem until Vinny actually brought this up. He said something about, like, I don't like holding Y to run in this game. Why is this... Did I never get this shine when I blew up the blocks? Uh, he said, like, I don't like holding Y when you also have to move the camera. Because that's not a problem in 3D World or Land. There's, like... There is, like, minor camera controls, but you never really need them. Uh, but in this, it's, you know, full 360-degree camera. And so you're constantly adjusting things, and if you have your finger on the Y button, and you're going, like, back and forth between that and the, the stick, it's not really that good. So, I feel like maybe just regular analog would have been 
better for this, but it, it's not that big of a deal. I get that they were trying to just keep the 3D world controls mostly. And like, I remember like when 3D Land came out. I'm not gonna make it. I made it. Uh, when 3D Land came out, I, I didn't understand why it was hold Y to run when you had, you know, the 3DS had a circle pad. It's like, why not just make it analog? But I guess they're trying to make it feel like the 2D games, and it works. I took my eyes off the rabbit. Um, so yeah, I don't mind that at all, holding Y to run in 3D Land and 3D World, but in here, it does kind of get in the way. That's probably, like, my only other criticism of this. Because otherwise, this is pretty great, honestly. Uh, it, it is like Odyssey Light. But with far more of 3D World's DNA. And uh, we can warp now. Very unceremoniously, but it, like... It doesn't matter. Captain Toad is here. So I don't know how long this is really going to take. What was I looking for? Oh. Um... I mean, this is essentially 50% of the game remaining, but I think this is going to go by a bit faster. Especially since I have now played this. But I like it, so let's finish it. Plessy, please. Okay. One second. Sorry, I just wanted to check something. Nice emote, Mitri. Who's that from? I saw Bows stirring. I still haven't been able to like figure out exactly when he's gonna Yeah, he's getting oh, he's getting angry. Oh, that's lack attack. Nice. Chef Mario. Is my brother Dimitri with the whole heap in the spaghetti pile of information? I am fucking up that camera bad. I don't know. <laughs> Let's try that again. Or not, if Bows is showing up. Him big. So it is nice of them to, you know, mark everything for you. Very much like Odyssey is. Just deciding where I want to be. 
when he gets big. This is fine. Hello, Mario. Oh yes, this gold island appears post-game as well. And he's gone. Luigi still yeah, Luigi's still here. Uh -oh. Not gonna make it. I'm looking for, like, his health bar. <laughs> Maybe I just took too long. Oh, yeah, he's, like, back here. <laughs> Not a good camera angle. I need boomerang. I wonder if they're gonna touch on what the hell this magic paint stuff is from, is where it came from. Probably not. <laughs> and I kind of don't mind, like... They don't, ex there's not a whole lot of story to this and they just kind of throw you into it. And I'm fine with that. Which is how a lot of Mario is to begin with, but, like, they really... There's a lot they could explain, but they just don't. But I like that about Mario games, where it's just like, don't question it. Like, of course there would be black goop that corrupted Bowser and turned him into a giant. I mean, like, there's no real connection to, like, the Sunshine thing. Like, they showed the the Shadow Mario M in the beginning. And there's no tie to that or anything at all. They just kind of, like, let you make up your own lore, I guess. Back already? Not now, God Slayer Bowser. He 
just like right outside. <laughs> oh, you know what? The Lucky Island is right here. Can I just go for that while it's here? Fuck the key. Oh. Alright, well fuck you, Bowser. That lasted like 30 seconds. Well, whatever. I did this island at all on stream. Well, I guess I must have. I got like three of the little shards, but I did not remember doing it. better at these. <laughs> I'm gonna make some early evening coffee. I've never been able to do evening slash like nighttime coffee. Well I've never really tried it. I've only tried it like once. But I don't understand, you know, like, the point of having coffee at night. Why am I even doing this? I can just warp. I think most of Bowser's appearances tonight are going to be very short. Yeah, I like that this is kind of like a last hurrah to a lot of unique stuff to 3D World. And like each island seems to be based on one specific mechanic from that game. And then you have like Plessy tying the whole thing together. It's just like, oh, I thought we'd never see a lot of these things again. And then they come out with this sort of like a best of 3D world. And I really... Playing it again... 
I, I love 3D World. I really do. Uh, I hadn't played it really in a while. Um, and like as soon as I... As soon as I played it again on this, it just reminded me why I love that so much. I did get kind of thrown by how fast it is now in this version, but I got used to that pretty quickly. I was genuinely, like, losing control as Toad. Plus, he can just fuck up everything. Uh, there weren't, like, any... When I played this on my own, there weren't really any shines or anything that, like, I genuinely had trouble with. There was nothing that, and it, you know, obviously this is a much smaller scale game than, like, Odyssey or whatever. But there was nothing that I had trouble with or, like, had to look up, and it just was, like, fun, you know? It was just... Run around and explore for a while. the one up there. It was above me. You know what? Let's do the ice island while we're here, since I feel like I barely did. Oh yeah, gotta return the cats too. The more I thought about this game, the more I understood it better. Because at first uh, it was like, well, that's kind of weird that they just let you have, you know, build up that many power-ups. Shit. Uh, why would you need all those power-ups? And then it kind of makes sense. If you're going to do a sandbox-style Mario game with power-ups and you have certain things that require a certain power-up, you know, how do you can how do you control that? How do you make sure the player can have anything at any time? Mario, please. Third time is the charm. Right? Right? Yeah. I love this song. I get super Cappy Kingdom vibes from it. It does sound like the, uh, yeah. The Cap Kingdom from Odyssey. It's like that whimsical, like, 
you know, like orchestra. They went like surprisingly all out, like with the music, it's completely new. Fully orchestrated. This is really like a marriage of 3D world and Odyssey, it feels like. Oh, hi. Fucking landed right on him. Guess we're doing Luigi chase now. I love that animation. <laughs> See, imagine if they did... Excuse me? Oh, neat. That's interesting. I don't think that was intentional. You can't get all those shines at once. No, uh, that lucky island, the gold island with five shines. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a cock tease, but... Uh, getting any shine instantly dispels Bowser, so you have to go to that island in five different spots, basically five different times. So they are all there, you just can't get them all at once. Oh, I was gonna say, uh, you know, imagine if they had, like, fully remastered Sunshine today. Instead of just the port. You know, like, how much more they could do with it, and, like, how much more personality could they give it? And how much of it could they fix? Plessy's song reminds me a lot of the Yoshi's Island SNES main theme. I'm just trying to, like, hear it for myself. Like the, uh... Like the level one theme? A little bit, I think. Like in the beginning there, specifically. Plus he would undoubtedly show up on Delfino, or at least their tropical relative, yeah. Or like how Sunshine had a lot of like bastardized versions of the usual Mario characters because Bowser Jr. painted them. So it would look like Plessy, but it would be slightly off. Which, you know, obviously they give him the paintbrush here, but he doesn't do a whole lot with it. Plus he looks like one of those dolphins from Mario World. Yeah, it's like a... A combination of those dolphins and Yoshi. I love Plessy. I'm glad they brought it back. And that you have 
complete full control over them now. Which is not a thing that was in 3D World. Now I remember last time I was trying to get the cat right there. It did not realize that there were platforms in the water. They need to bring back those dolphins, though. Those rarely get... attention. <laughs> and I always liked those. Oh, wait, I just did the... island there. We'll go back here. I like this song. This might be my favorite uh, new song from this game. This feels like if, if it were a standard Mario game, this would be like the athletic theme. What do you think about Bowser in this game? Does he appear too often? It's a bit of a cop-out that some content is gated behind waiting for him to show up. Yeah, I was I was talking about that last time and I, I mentioned it a little earlier. Um, I'm not sure... You know, timing-wise, like, how often he shows up or, like, for how long he sticks around. Uh, I'm not sure if I take much issue with that. But, yeah, I don't really like the, you know, having to wait for him to show up to destroy those, you know, particular blocks. And there's a set of those on every island. Um, and like I said, I, I didn't realize this on my first stream of this, but I realized when I played it on my own that you can force him to appear if you use a Bowser Amiibo. Um, but still, if you don't have a Bowser Amiibo, then it's like, well, you just gotta sit around and wait. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's not the best thing. And I was definitely getting, like, overwhelmed when I was first playing this, because I was like, oh, I gotta remember next time Bowser shows up, I gotta come back here. And... You know, with such a big open world, it's it's a little overwhelming just in general because you're you're traveling around. And you're like, oh, I want to go there, but oh, I gotta I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Um, I don't think that's necessarily like a bad thing, but for someone like me, it does get a bit, like I said, overwhelming. violins and fiddles and Mario music like Puzzle Plank, yeah I like, um yeah, Puzzle Plank is I think probably like my second favorite song in Galaxy 2 after Yoshi Star oh, I did this one, I think. 
But, um, what's the other one that has, like... Oh, in uh, 3D World. Not, like, the main athletic theme, but... Like, the Double Cherry Pass theme. Has, like, good fiddle in it, I think. I'm so glad that Mario, as a series, has gone in on the uh, big band jazz genre for a lot of its music, particularly in 3D World, uh, but also Mario Kart, like Mario Kart 8 is an amazing soundtrack. Double Cherry Pass is such a good song. Yeah, that's my favorite one, I think, in the game. Like that, and probably the Histocrat battle theme. I don't know if I want to play 3D World, like, straight after I finish this stream. I might. Um, I have to decide if that's like too much of the same thing or if I just feel like doing it. But I did just play 100% of it on my own, so. I wish I could find out who wrote it. I think Yokata, the Galaxy Composer, had a hand, but not sure if he was the main writer. I feel like I saw at one point the composers for all of the uh, 3D World music, because for some reason I know that uh, Koji Kondo himself did the athletic theme and like the beach theme, and that was like the only one he did, because they're kind of like variations of each other. Uh, I think Odyssey had, like, a listing of, like, who did what song, but now I don't remember if that's true for either of those games. I also don't like, uh, this is not exact, god damn it, this is not quite the same thing, but since 3D Land, all of the Mario games, the credits are just in alphabetical order. And it doesn't, you know, for the most part, it doesn't tell you who did what. Not that that would tell us who's the composer of what song, but it just made me think of that. Locos Mountain. from my mouth just a little while ago and like I'm looking at that oh shit we're gonna miss the island stay Fuck. I'm not gonna make it yep left without me that was like the last shine that I got on my own file when I was playing by myself off stream I could not figure out there was one left and I was like there's a there's an exclamation mark just moving and I couldn't figure I thought it was like one of the birds from Odyssey
I don't know if I want to just, like, wait here for the island to come back, because it's going to be too annoying to come back up here. Oh, and now Bowser's here. Oh, I know what I can do. There's a toad over here. Bowser is just not getting a chance to do anything tonight. Okay, we don't have to wait that long at least. Almost royally fucked that up. I think this song might be my favorite, though it is a little repetitive. I like it, yeah. Usually, like, the lava... The lava and, like, desert themes are not always my favorite, but this one's pretty good. I, I, this one reminds me a lot of, like, Galaxy in Galaxy 2, like, the Melty Monster Galaxy, or Melty Molten Galaxy. It's kind of like a march. Music in the Mountain actually reminds me a bit of Breath of the Wild for some reason. I can kind of understand that, yeah. Not that I've... I haven't played Breath of the Wild still. I don't know if I ever will. And yet, I like it a whole lot. <laughs> Not even having played it, it's... I guess I just watched so many other people play it when it came out that I've experienced it in pieces, but I really should pre uh, play it. Preferably sometime before 2 comes out. If 2 comes out. Uh-oh. Alright, where do we still need to break blocks here? I played the Wii U version way back when and never beat it. I enjoyed the huge world and things fine, but never really felt the need to face the final boss. I used to be such a stickler for like a hundred percent in games. And Lately, there have been, like, a few games that I've, you know, new games that I've bought and then just never finished. And I still feel like I got my fill of them. Um, but then I think back to it and I feel kind of guilty. Like, I'm like, oh man, I really should go back and beat that game. But, I mean, I guess Breath of the Wild is such a massive game that you could just do everything except complete the story and still have a fulfilling experience. Um, yeah, I never beat... Like, the two that come to mind are uh, the two ukulele games. 
which I enjoyed both of them and got to the end of both of them, I just never beat them. And I don't know why. And every once in a while, like, ukulele comes up, or I see it in my <laughs> Switch library, and I'm like, oh yeah, I, I feel like I'm doing it a disservice by not beating it. Uh-oh. But I think it's also fine to play a game and not finish it and be okay with that if you still enjoyed it. Or alternatively, you know, if you genuinely didn't enjoy it, you shouldn't feel uh, obligated to beat something if you're not enjoying it. I've never given a uh, Yuka game at a... I've never given either Yuka game a try, though I did love Rares and 64 platformers. I... I remember when Ukulele, the original, came out... Uh, and everybody was so excited for it. And then all I heard... This is not good. Okay. All I heard were people complaining about it. And... <laughs> God damn it. And that kind of turned me off of it. And, um... You know, I was, like, afraid to try it. I was like, oh, maybe this isn't worth it. Even though I really wanted to play, you know, a collectathon like that. Uh, and then I finally got it on sale for, like, I think, like, $13.99 on here. And I played it, and I thought it was great. I understood, like, a, a sum of, like, the... Some of, like, what people... What I had remembered people saying, but overall, I thought it was great. I still like the tweet that claims the colored cats are based on Mario's closest... Oh, I know where you're going with this. Uh, the colored cats are based on Mario's closest friends, Luigi, Peach, Toad, and Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> Speaking of... Mario's best friend, Shadow the Hedgehog. played this and I don't know Mario's a pretty close name to Maria. That's why every time somebody makes like a fan art gender bend of Mario, it's just like, oh, they just call him Maria. Luigi's usually a little harder. But I think most of the time I see like Louise.
Your mom is right over there. Just go to her. Oh. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Uh-oh. She's gonna get corrupted. The way the mama cat cries actually legit makes me sad. It's... It's adorable. Like, there's so much, like, genuine personality in that, and now she's going to be pissed. <laughs> Fucked up. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I like how the Mama Cat is taller than Mario. I didn't even realize that. that... Or, like, I guess I did, and I just accept- oh, sh I can just run across this. Why am I even bothering with the cat toys? I guess I just accepted it because Mario. And I guess I'm like thinking of the penguin from Mario 64. This is huge. The door stoppers. Hey Diego. That is what they are. <laughs> There's the little things that you just go. You just flick them. rank Super Mario 3D World higher or Bowser's Fury? Uh, 3D World. Definitely. Um. I get the comparison, but, like, it's also doesn't feel like a fair comparison because this game is pretty light. And it's just, like, a side thing. Um. I need to remember to go here next time we get Bowser. Um, 3D World, I think, I, I've come to the realization uh, that I think 3D World is genuinely perfect. Like a 10 out of 10 game. Um, and it's like the, the longest and the biggest of any of the level-based Marios. And then here you have the lightest of the mission-based Marios. Um, I think this is a really good, like, I'm trying to figure out... I've been trying to think, like, over the past week, you know, like, how... How do I count this among the rest of the main Mario series? Because I think this could stand on its own. Um, but I also think it is a good companion piece to 3D World. I like 3D World a lot, but I think as a single player experience, it maybe loses a bit of its, uh, it loses a bit of its advantage. See, I never played it a whole lot multiplayer, and I tend not to, uh, with games like that. Like, I might get to play some multiplayer stuff, but... Usually, like, multiplayer with Mario games is kind of like a, a bonus thing for me. Uh... Uh, so I usually think, when I think of the games and how much I like them, I think of how the single player experience is. Um... But I definitely understand that, because it is a game that was definitely designed around 
multiplayer for a lot of it. Like, they really want you to have, like, that competitive experience with three other people. <laughs> but I just, like, um... I just like the levels in 3D World. They're really good levels, there's a lot of them, and I like that 3D World doesn't play by its own rules a lot, in the sense that, like, not everything about 3D World is uniform, really. Uh, like, you'll have a, a regular style level, and then you'll have a level where it's like one room and it's only 100 seconds, and then you'll have a level that's only a boss or like an enemy and so it does like a lot of things compared to like uh, the new Super Mario Brothers games where it just feels like everything is uniform the whole way through I guess I'm gonna get my Bowser amiibo <laughs> Let's put him to work. Look at that. Easy game. Fury Bowser's design is so cool, I'd love to see him back somehow in the next main Mario. That's another thing I was thinking about that I kind of realized. That it seems like the whole concept of Fury Bowser exists because this is a smaller game. Um, let me see if I can articulate this properly. The the fact that they made this a side thing and we're just like, hey, let's do something on a smaller scale. I think that's why they were able to do this fully open world without having it be too overwhelming. Like, you have the whole world right here and not only do you have that open world, that's how you can have this whole, like, kaiju thing going on. Uh, like, I was trying to think, could something like this exist? Would they do something like this, I should say, on a larger scale? Uh, and this seems like the perfect size for something like that to happen, because then you can have the entire world basically become small. Oh no. <laughs> so you can do that uh, Kaiju Bowser battle. I guess what I mean is, if the world was bigger... If the world was bigger, or if they had a bit, uh, bigger project on their hands, would they have even gone for the open world concept, and would they have gone for this size of an open world? 
and would Fury Bowser have even happened if it weren't for that? The actual battle Mario has with him isn't as interesting as the rest of the game. I like it. Um, but, like, the boss battles in Mario are never really, like, the big thing that you want to, that you really care about. Like, Mario is always more about the running and jumping around and exploring. So I think this one is pretty cool. I wonder how Bowser's Fury speed runs are. 100% is 1 hour and 24 minutes. This is insane. <laughs> I've almost been streaming for that long just tonight. <laughs> Speaking of Bowser, let's bring him back. Oh, hi. Bowser, can you come back here real quick? I need you again. Bowser, can you one more time, please? Man, he just shows right up, too. <laughs> He's right there. Uh, where's that spot I'm looking for? One more time, Bowser. Oh, I was expecting that island to show up somewhere else. But this is cool. This is good, too. really start to rack them up quickly as you get towards the end. Oh. 
Hey, can you guys guess what time it is? That's right, it's Bowser time. Bowser time is all the time. What's left? this. Yep. Bowser time is all the time in the new Bowser's Fury game on your Nintendo Switch game console. I just remembered, like, when I was a kid. Um, there's, like, these... This place we used, we would go uh, over in Pennsylvania <laughs> called uh, Longwood Gardens, which is just, you know, like a public gardens sort of thing. Um... And I remember going there as a kid and seeing uh, Venus flytraps in person for the first time. And it's not like I didn't know that they existed prior to that, or that, like I didn't know what they were. But seeing them in person for the first time was like, whoa, I could get one of these in my room and it could be like a piranha plant. And I never did. I mean, I don't know where you get that sort of thing anyway. Much less if it could survive here. I mean, like, the ones at those gardens were in, you know, like a greenhouse conservatory sort of thing. I don't know if they would fare well just chilling on my windowsill or something. These flytraps kind of freak me out, maybe due to Mario. Uh, yeah, make no mistake, it's, like, when you really think about it, and, like, when you see, like, I remember, like, looking in one, and you could see, uh, like, inside of it, like, a dead fly, just kind of, like, chilling in there, but it was open. And, um, yeah, like, it's kind of freaky, and it's not normally the kind of thing I really like. But I guess because there is a a bit of a relation to Mario, it made me want it. It made me, like, look beyond the fact that it's a fly-eating plant. We had a Venus flytrap that we got from a floral department from H-E-B a few years ago. It did not live. Does best in like a little terrarium. 
I... There's someone I, I follow who actually has a few... Uh, not just Venus flytraps, but... Some similar other plants and stuff that they take care of. Uh, but they live in California, where the climate is much warmer. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not impossible for somebody to just have, I guess. This is the fun part of wondering, like, which of these cat shards I got here last time and which ones I didn't. I mean, it, I, it tells you at the bottom, I'm missing two and three, but I don't know which ones those are or where those are exactly. Well, there's one of them. And the other one must be further back. Real question is where? Uh oh. We're losing altitude. <laughs> pull up, pull up, landing gear, landing gear, pull up. Was that a winged cheap cheap? Those were bitty buds. I think is what you were referring to, but I read that late. <laughs> oh, there's like a ton of coins here now. I didn't know that. I assume this was the first shard, so... Oh, I know where... Uh-oh. That was just really overstaying as welcome this time. Also, I want to be Kanuki. It's interesting that with this open world level design, there's no such thing as bottomless pits anymore. I did not even realize that. That's a good point. I mean, like, there's not even, like, really... I'm trying to think, like, there's not bonus areas or anything, even, that have... I mean, like, there's the cloud areas, but you just fall down back to here. even still missing. Ah. 
Um, yeah. Because, like, even in, like, you think of, like, Odyssey, there's still, like, every world has an edge. Which is one thing that I always, like, I remember, like, when Mario 64 came out. And, god damn it. <laughs> uh, it just felt weird to me that the worlds didn't just go on end uh, endlessly, like you see here, basically. And you could just fall off the world. Um, and I always thought we would get to a point where that stopped happening. But yeah, you look at Odyssey... You could just go to the edge of, like, the Sand Kingdom and walk right off. Um, and even 3D Land and 3D World, they're meant to, uh, you know, kind of be reminiscent of the, the 2D Mario levels. So they have to be designed a bit different, but it still feels a little weird to me that you could just basically at any time just yeet yourself off the edge of the level. Hey Ben, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. Which one am I still missing? I think I forgot one of the toads, but I don't know... Oh no, I guess I got all the toads. Wait. I'm confused. I mean, this is the only one we have left, and it's not Toad-related, so... What's up with the weird borders on the map? Oh yeah, it is like a... It is a canvas. Oh, look at that. I actually did not notice that. That's a nice little touch. Yes, there actually is... You do kind of like fight Bowser again. After this. And then that's like... The true end. That's good end. So you know what that means. This is it, Luigi. What if this is a painting Bowser Jr. did and his dad got sucked into? I guess you can kind of look at it that way. Because, like, the beginning shows Mario, like, going into the M goop thing. I feel like this is a 2004 middle school girl's dream come true. Everything is a cat. <laughs> The only thing here that is not a cat were those crabs. Even the birds are cats.
Bowser Roth, yeah. She's got like the white going on now. I don't know if like this fight is actually like any harder or anything. He just has like big health. Crabs aren't cats, 7 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, they forgot to update the model. <laughs> I love doing that. That's extremely satisfying to just throw that giant chunk of land at him. I mean, as far as, like, Bowser battles go in the main Mario series, I mean, like, obviously, like, RPGs and stuff are different. This is probably my favorite one, just because of, like, how different it is and how unique it is. And that you are actually fighting him directly and not just, like, fighting his hot tub, like in Mario Sunshine, or just dropping the bridge out from under him. The Mario team forgot to add cat ears to the crabs in the wasteland. This was fixed in version 1.2. That'd be hilarious if they did actually, like, patch in the crab the cat ears. Lava actually still hurts you. Uh -oh. I don't think the bells respawn on this fight. And I missed. And I missed. <sighs> Come on. I'm in danger. Oh my god. I just need to throw just one. Just one hit. Oh my god, I missed. <laughs> this is it. Got him. <laughs> Short enough to walk under the fire. <laughs> Vomit now!
So I actually don't really understand this part of the... F I mean, I understand how to do it. But I don't really understand this part of the fight just from a story standpoint. Like, why... Like, we got rid of the goo from him. He's no longer corrupted, but he's still giant, and also, like, the cat bells are there. And I know, like I just said earlier, like, I don't really care if it gets explained or not. Story stuff in Mario, but... It just kind of seems like an odd choice, or like they wanted to do something like this and couldn't figure out how to include it. I don't mind. I like it. Even though I'm doing very poorly at it. I'm trying to utilize the, uh, the diving mechanic, which I did not do last time because I didn't realize it existed. It's like a faster version of last time, too, so... Yeah, I'll, I'll save the diving for the fire breath, I guess. Or not. If I were Nico, I would simply just win. I didn't even think of that. Where's the win button on my Joy-Con? Is it this one? No. Yeah, my win button is drifting. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize I was small. Do you have a too bad emote? right now, unfortunately. <laughs>
I'm just like it's like better hope you have maximum amount of every uh, power up here because then you can just damage boost and keep using it much to avoid. It's just like a little too... And it's because it's a faster version. Like, it's literally just like they sped it up 150%, I think. But there we go. So long, get Bowser. Yeah, happy anniversary to Zelda, I guess. <laughs> wow. I bet you're all wondering about Breath of the Wild 2. Unfortunately, we have nothing to tell you. Poorly rendered JPEG background. <laughs> Why does Bowser explode like a firework? I don't know, he just kind of does. That's like his new thing since, like, 3D World. <laughs> I bet you're all wondering about Breath of the Wild too. We are too! That's all, folks. <laughs> yeah, there's a hundred percent of Bowser and his fury. This is like the only, if you watch Bowser Jr.'s paintings here, this is as much story as you get out of this, so. If you can interpret Junior's drawings, then congratulations, you get lore. I think this story is Bowser Jr. painted him with the black goop and fucked him up. <laughs> I'm gonna paint my dad's face while he's sleeping, it'll be funny. Junior's fault the whole time.
but it all worked out in the end. And that's... oh, it's gone already. I was gonna say, there's your reward for getting all of the cat shines, except there's actually one other little reward. If you go back into your file. Mario is... Uh, small Giga Cat Mario and uh, Junior where are you going get over here Junior finally become has become cat which is honestly and even the his clown car gets whiskers That's actually pretty adorable. Everyone gets a fursona. <laughs> but yeah, that's... Yeah, except the crabs still. As far as I know. And that is Bowser's Fury. Uh, hmm. Do you guys care if I just go right to 3D World? <laughs> I mean, that didn't take, like, that long. That was... Alright, sure, let's... 